I gave a girl everything I had to give. Money I didn't have, time I couldn't waste. When she lost her peace, I found it and I dragged it back to her. I showed her another side of the world without ever leaving the city. She told me that I was so kind and so sensitive that we would fall in love. But after a few months, we had a falling out. I decided it was best that we didn't talk anymore. In response to this, she told me that I was possessive, that I'd fall in love too easily, and I'm too sensitive. And now I know what it means when they say that people will hate the very qualities they loved about you, and it will leave you unsure of yourself. You will wonder what changed. Was it them, or was it me? You will question the value of I love yous after seeing how conditional love can be. Your first instinct will be to blame yourself because your love for this person will not want to allow you to blame them. It's rare that people will admit to hurting you. Instead, they will often frame you as being wrong or convincing themselves that you are toxic in order to alleviate their own guilt. And if you have been kind to them, Having little to pull from, they will have no option but to turn your better qualities against you. Your passion will be newly regarded as overwhelming. Your concern will be possessiveness. Your kindness will be naivety. Your love will be too much. But in regard to emotion, you cannot love too much. You can only love the wrong person. The more in tune you are with their emotions is the more human you will be. We weren't given feelings to hide them away and numb ourselves. We were made to feel. It's how we interact with everything around us. It's how we remind ourselves we're alive. So I resent the idea of being too sensitive. Because in a world continually growing colder, people will try to rob you of your warmth. But we need vulnerability. We need people who embrace their own feelings and recognize the weight of them so we can begin to see the validity in the feelings of others. I resent the idea that I need to change, to harden myself in order to survive in this world. Maybe the world is what needs changing. We try to convince ourselves that our minds set precedence over the things we feel, as if we can turn off our emotions and function off logic alone. We will always lose. Because we are not machines, we are human beings. And what sets us apart from an assortment of codes and numbers is our ability to find balance between logic and intuition. So I will not change. I will be too sensitive. And because you can't find it within yourself to appreciate me, doesn't mean I've lost my worth. A reoccurring thought. There's so much more to life than we're afforded most times. There's so many cultures centered around spirituality or the discovery of self and the pursuit of happiness. I'm exhausted living where I do, interacting with people who only have this one dimensional perspective on life. And I'm tired of the culture we live in. We are told to make the best of what we have. But there is no shortage of money or resources in the world. There is only a surplus of greed. I wonder how I keep getting caught in these loops of depression. I've found that it's my environment. An environment that forces me to fit inside a mold I don't belong just to survive. It drains my autonomy. I find I do what I have to more than I do what I want. If I could wake up every day and just be, I'd be fine. If I could wake up and let the world take me where it will, it might take me to happiness. Jim Carrey said depression is your body telling you it's tired of playing a character. And I'm tired. My depression isn't sadness, it's exhaustion. Everybody walks around and they go like, why am I depressed? Well, it's because you're trying to be something for the world. You know, and as soon as you, you know, let that go, better things happen 
because they're just happening, but it's not, uh, you know. Now it's the sadness, you know, sadness comes, happiness comes. It doesn't sit on you long enough to drown you. Who were you before the world told you who you were? Think about what it is that you do most often. Now imagine a life without it. Who are you outside of what you do? And that person, the one at my core, is who is tired of being put to the side for masks I'm forced to wear or people I'm forced to be. Versions of myself I have to put on to appease those around me. I'm not sad. I'm tired. There's so much more to life than what we're afforded sometimes. I look at the sky and it reminds me there's always a part of the world I haven't reached. It reminds me there's always more. But I dream about a life waking up in an apartment somewhere warm. And as the sun creeps over the windows, the only sound I hear is nature. A slight rain. There are no cars or people. There's a silence beyond quietness. And for a second, I feel completely alone on earth. I think, what do I have to do today? And a feeling of relief flushes over me. Nothing at all. There's a lot I don't know. For instance, I never know what I want to order before I go eat, even though I always end up getting what I got the last time. I know what I want out of life, but I'm not entirely sure how I'll get there. And I didn't know I had anxiety until last year, and honestly, I didn't know there were words for a lot of the things I feel. I don't know if I mean the things I say, or if I say them because they mean something to you, and I'm afraid you do the same when you speak to me. There's a lot I'm unsure about. But what's been bothering me most is I'm not sure in who I am. I have an idea of things I like and things I don't like, the kind of people I enjoy being around, and I have a pretty good idea of how people view me. But there's this voice in my head. It's almost another person, but it's still me. It asks questions like, are you doing this because you're a good person or because you'll be praised for being a good person? And that question sticks with me because it questions my own genuity. Am I the person I present myself to be? You're never really who you are to anyone except yourself. Perspective is inescapable. From other eyes, you will only ever be who you are in relation to them. And this is why I question my own character. There's a reason it's easy to sing in the shower. Or you can dance alone in your room even though you can't dance. It's easier to be you when no one's watching. Because when people are watching, then judgment comes into the mix. And oftentimes, because you fear being judged, you begin judging yourself. And by you, I mean me, because I'm speaking to myself as well. The comfortability I find when I'm by myself is the comfortability I want when I'm around others. Not just comfort where I am, but with who I am wherever I go. So I've been trying to figure out how to be me when I go outside. So that nothing is something I do, but anything I do is everything I am. And to do that, I figure I have to first be comfortable in myself. I have to not only spend time by myself, but with myself, productively. Actively learning self-acceptance, self-love, self-everything. I need to do for myself what I'm more than willing to do for others. And it's ironic because this is advice I usually give, but I never take my own advice. So I'm trying to do that now. So this part of my life is called finding comfort. part of a short adulthood wishing I was a kid again. Since 18, I've wanted to be 12 because life was better then. I remember summers feeling warm, not just outside, but how I felt inside. I felt warmth. And love felt like something to fall helplessly in, and every day demanded a new adventure because we had all the time in the world. And that time is what I miss most. Not because I've aged, but because in aging, time slips out of your hands. 
You don't do what you want. You do what you have to. You schedule your freedom. Your happiness is put off until weekends. You make more friends out of convenience than connection. Real connection. And real becomes something foreign to you. Real intentions, real love, real people, real everything. I dwell on the past because it's when I can remember life feeling authentic. I see people all around me and I wonder if they're happy or if they're comfortable. Have they settled? I only hate to fill me up. I only sleep to rest. I need a love just like a game. I haven't found it yet, found it yet. What I want out of life is a lot more than comfort. I want ideal. I want to live fully, forever. And I hate the idea that becoming an adult means sacrificing your youth when we're on a planet that's a part of a universe that's existed for millenniums. So whether we're six or 60, in comparison, we're young. Youth is not something limited to children. It's the wonder in the back of your mind and your pursuit of happiness. The drive to explore whatever finds your interest and every person deserves to hold on to this. We deserve our ideal lives to find what it really means to be thoroughly and wholeheartedly happy. I remember when being a good person was a standard. Now we're only kind to people who are kind to us. And this world, it thrives off our selfishness. The death of humanity will be our loss of humanity. Our loss of childlike optimism, our upfront kindness and curiosity and our acceptance. I'm finally realizing you don't have to grow up to grow. As I get older, I only want to feel younger, to think younger and act younger. I want to enjoy my youth until I die. So here's to being 21. I get comfortable very easily, sometimes too soon. I hate facades and I've never held up a shield, so I find it hard to restrain the entirety of who I am, I've realized. This doesn't always work out in my favor. Because when you're comfortable, you share something closer to the rawest version of yourself. And this makes it harder for others to uphold their personal images of you subconsciously I beg to question, do you enjoy me? Or do you enjoy your idealized version of me? Are we here together? Or am I playing a part in a script you are writing in your head? I've never been a good actor. I smile too much. And it seems you only appreciate me being myself when it coincides with who you think I am. I seem to step out of character. When I step out of my shell, I'm not a portrait or a painting. I'm a person. I have bad angles and even worse days sometimes. I don't expect you to be happy with every part of me. But I hope you're prepared to love not only your favorite parts, but everything outside of the frame you've tried to box me in. <laughs>